Artists are some of the most ambitious and sensitive people I've ever met, being one of them, of course. We have all these plans, all these visions, and we want to change culture. We have a message that we want to share and we want to inspire. Sometimes it gets very, very, very overwhelming and we start experiencing something like artist block or other things. And I really don't want that to happen to you. So let me share with you today five tips that I use for dealing with overwhelm. Welcome back, everyone. And if you're new here, welcome to Arts by Sarah channel. In this channel, I share with you tips and resources that will help you go from an aspiring to an achieving artist. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I do for overwhelm is pause. You're like, Sarah, I have deadlines. I have things. I cannot pause. You're telling me to stop everything. You're telling me to drop everything. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying pause. It could be for 30 seconds. Now, once we pause, I want you to take a step back. And especially if you're a visual artist, I want you to engage your vision. This is a practice that is guaranteed. I don't want to say it's guaranteed, guaranteed, but like 95 to 99% of the time, it helps me to calm down and kind of have a clear head and see what I'm going to do next. Now, what I want you to do for this exercise is to focus on one object. And I'm using the Apple Pencil as an example for this video. Place it in front of you and just look at it. You don't have to label it. You don't have to say what it is. You don't have to evaluate it in your mind. Just look at it as an object existing. And that in its own has a way of bringing the mind into a place where it's calmer. Your thoughts are not racing anymore. You're not overthinking about anything and kind of have a clearer mental state. Now, once we are calmer and our thoughts are not racing anymore, it's time for tip number two, which is ask ourselves, why are we overwhelmed? This needs a lot of honesty and you don't have to evaluate your whole life. I'm not saying reevaluate everything from childhood till now and tell me your whole life story. No, it could be something like this. Well, because I have a deadline and then I have to go to see relatives. I have that commitment I made. I have another deadline that's coming up. I have a number of things and that's why I'm feeling overwhelmed. Once we ask ourselves that question, we're going to get honest on what can we deal with right now and what is more priority than the other. Understanding what our priorities are and even sometimes if we have to pause on art to deal with other things, like if you're a student and you need to be studying, Focus on that for a little bit and just make that deal with your mind of like, all right, I have all the time after I finish my study to do all the art I want, for example. Or if you have a family commitment, carve out an hour or two a day, a week, a month to do your art. So that way you're kind of keeping track with the things that you love and the things that you should do. And this takes us to tip number three, which is re-evaluation. So now that you have asked yourself a question, you kind of reprioritized, we need to re-evaluate. If you have gone through the ask yourself why you're overwhelmed and it's nothing external except for your art, re-evaluation practice looks like this. Ask yourself, am I still doing something that I'm enjoying? Am I still doing a medium of art that I'm enjoying? Is my heart wanting to experience and experiment with other forms, other mediums, other things? Is there a new project that's coming in my mind, but then there is fear that's stopping me and th therefore I'm getting overwhelmed? Am I still creating things that I enjoy creating? Am I still creating things that I enjoy creating or am I going through the motion? Just re-evaluating these things again, being honest with ourselves, just getting the clarity that helps us so much and it kind of puts things in perspective. And once we have the answers of, all right, now I'm aligned with my goals, I'm still interested in the same form of art, but then I want to create new scenes, for example. I want to move from drawing portraits to landscape. Now you have your answer. And once you have your answer, it helps with overwhelm. You're no longer in that hype state where you're feeling the anger and like emotions are high and stuff. It brings us peace. And so for tip number four for today is empty your plate. 
yes, drop everything. And you're like, Sarah, really drop everything? Like, do you not know my life? No, I don't know your life, but I'm not telling you to drop everything forever. What I'm saying is write down all your commitments, all your goals, everything that you're doing right now, be it from work, from art, from anything, put it all on a paper and then grab an empty piece of paper and now that you have two pieces of paper, one full of commitments that you're already doing and one that's empty completely, I want you to pick and choose what are your priority projects? What are your priority commitments? Make that brand new list. Consider it like a fruit plate that's empty and you have all this buffet in front of you, all types of fruits. If you're not into fruit, sweets, whatever you're into, and you're going to grab whatever fills your soul and your pocket because hey i don't want you to drop your work and be like sarah told me to not work and just go follow the art i take no responsibility over that don't come after me but you're gonna refill your plate you're gonna refill with new commitments that you align with and this takes us to tip number five which is recommit to joyful practices Whenever we're feeling overwhelmed, it means that there are things that we're dreading in there and it means that we're not doing enough joyful things. Let's get honest. Sometimes you're a student, you have to finish your school or you're the main provider for your household and you cannot drop your job for art. You don't have supportive family. There are certain things that happen in someone's life, in every person's life, that kind of we have to go through these phases in order to get where we want. Now, this does not mean that we cannot right now find things that are joyful and do them on the daily. An example of that would be, when was the last time I went for a walk? When was the last time I went for a swim? When was the last time I called a friend and just had a conversation to catch up? Recommit to joyful practices. Now, I understand this has nothing to do with art, but it has everything to do with art at the same time, because as long as you're joyful, and you're aligned with everything that you're doing, it's going to reflect on your art and it's going to reflect on everything that you do and not only your art. And it's going to reflect on the person that you are and the way that people connect to you and the way your message comes across or your work comes across. So might as well, after we reevaluated everything, we picked and choose whatever we want to put back on our plate and we ask ourselves, what is it that I really want or what do I not want? And we pause and we got ourselves to this calm, beautiful place of thought. Now it's time to add something joyful on the plate. I hope these tips were helpful. And again, there are so many ways out there that could help you with dealing with overwhelm. But these were some of my top five that how I deal with overwhelm myself. If this was valuable, please let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments. Just interact in the comments. Comment, please. And if you want to see more content like this from me, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much. It's the free thing that you can do, but it takes both of us a long way. Until next time, happy creating. Take care.